In the headlines, oral submissions wrapped up on Monday in what could evolve into a legal challenge of government's procurement practices. The General Post Office closed for maintenance and head of the National Youth Council targets the enablers of underage drinking. I'm Andrea Louis with the Channel 5 News details coming up. Thank you for staying with us. First up, oral submissions wrapped up on Monday in the judicial review leave stage over the award of the Rosa Westbridge project to Barbadian firm. Idona John Baptist explains. Judicial review is a legal process by which a party challenges the lawfulness of a decision by a public authority. In this case, the Joint Consultative Committee for the Construction Sector is challenging the tendering process of the $18.2 million contract to NSG Management and Technical Services Limited of Barbados. Justice Bernie Stevenson heard submissions from the legal teams representing the Construction Sector Committee and government on Monday. In the first step of the judicial review, an application for leave to bring judicial review proceedings must first be made. At this stage, the legal team of the Construction Sector Committee is seeking to demonstrate that their clients or the applicants were affected by government's decision to grant a Barbadian firm the bridge contract and were affected by the manner in which it was done. A five-member legal team with Queen's Counsel Roger Ford of Barbados, Senior Counsel Anthony Astefan, Attorneys Lennox Lawrence, Aflin Nesty, and Tamika Hyacinth represent government, while local attorney Kevin Williams, Senior Counsel Reginald Amo, and attorney Vanessa Gopal, both of Trinidad, represent the Joint Consultative Committee for the Construction Sector. When Senior Counsel Reginald Amor addressed Judge Stevenson, he said that the case is of constitutional importance and he asked that she grants leave so that all aspects of the case can be argued at a trial. The construction group's lawyer, according to his submission, says government is not applying the law of the country by disregarding the Public Procurement and Contract Administration Act of 2012, which came into force in 2015 by an Act of Parliament. He reasons on the basis that there was not full disclosure of the Westbridge project contract by government and his clients only heard information about the tendering process on an April 26, 2016 radio broadcast by the Prime Minister. Amor further stated that a section of the Public Procurement Act speaks to making public procurement proceedings transparent. In an April 26 statement by Prime Minister Skerritt, he expressed confidence in the over 40-year experience of NSG Management Limited, stating that it was a need to speed up the start of the bridge project, dredging the river and a river wall to ensure that people would not be put in harm's way if a similar event like Tropical Storm Erica took place. In judicial review, the High Court judge would have the power in such a matter to declare acts of either the government or the parliament unconstitutional. If Judge Brooks grants leave to proceed with the matter, the legal team for the Construction Sector Committee is expected to bring judicial review proceedings. Government's legal team is arguing that if the judge grants leave for judicial review, it would be detrimental to good administration and the public's interest. Idona John Baptist. Channel 5 News. In other lead stories, staff of the General Post Office had a day off on Monday as the building was closed for maintenance works. Here again is Idona John Baptist. In a government statement, the public was informed that maintenance works began at the building on the weekend and would have completed by Monday. This was for the purpose of improving the work environment at the post office building, according to the statement. This follows a strike by post office employees on September 21, demanding a response over complaints of poor working conditions. Government's chief personnel officer intervened and had since announced that urgent measures would have been taken to address the matter. One of those measures included investigations by the Environmental Health Department to determine whether a claim of asbestos in the building was true. No confirmation to that effect has been forthcoming. Idona John Baptist, Channel 5 News. A no drug, no alcohol challenge has been issued to the youth of Dominica for the independent season. 
President of the National Youth Council of Dominica, Senator Honorable ja Isaiah Benoit, addressing the award ceremony on Saturday, was extremely concerned about shopkeepers who sell alcohol to minors. He advised them all to follow the Prime Minister's example and preserve their minds during this festive season. We know that it's a time for revelry, a time for festivity, but it's a time for you to be responsible and not engage in the consumption of alcohol or the use of any illicit drugs. Let's make sure that our minds are preserved because your mind is this country's greatest asset. And I also want to send a message to the private sector because this is something that has came up very often in our, our national youth policy review meetings at the district level. We find it unfortunate that so many private sector businesses sell alcohol to young persons, underage minors, so willy-nilly in this country. He explained that the leaders cannot be more concerned than the youth themselves. We are saying that if you are a responsible business person, if you're going to sell alcohol, you have a license to sell alcohol and other spirits. You should demand an identification card for anybody that's going to purchase, especially if the person doesn't look like they have the age to consume alcohol. And so we want to send this message out there that the National Youth Council, we don't support the sale of alcohol to minors, and this is something that we'd like to see stop. Okay? We want the minds of our youth to be preserved so that they can contribute meaningfully to Dominica's development. There were 52 nominees, all under age 35, for the NYC Awards this year. The awardees are Natasha Green, copying the Kalinago Award, the Rotary Club of Dominica for Outstanding Community Organization, Marvin Marie, Most Outstanding in Music, Royce Williams, Outstanding Through Agriculture, Kadisha St. Louis, Outstanding in Media, Shadrach Burton, Outstanding in Visual and Performing Arts, Ansel Prince received an award for performing arts, outstanding youth with faith-based achievements. Absent were Lorna Gist, outstanding achievements in literary arts. Mr. Linvor, Shani Angol, outstanding achievements in the field of sports. Travis Joseph, outstanding in culture and heritage. The first President's Award went to Yulina Odin and the second to Fayel Lander. Marpin 2K for customers now have their full service restored. Company technicians have been burning their candles at both ends since Tropical Storm Matthew in an effort to restore service to our valued customers. Senior technician Donald Roll has the latest update. We had a target of Friday and that pretty much was met. There was a challenging situation in the East Coast where our fibers were damaged and got broken. And it took us quite a bit of time. We worked late into the night to restore it, but thankfully the service was restored on late Friday evening. That affected areas from um, Kai Reserve all the way up to Dillis, since our main hub at Freyal was done. The other area of concern was, like I mentioned on Friday, was Sufria Scott's head. That didn't take too much of our resources. That was up pretty much by noon of, of the day, of the Friday. Other areas we had, we suffered losses, we had free burn power supplies at Collio on Saturday we repaired one, or replaced one at Belvis Chopin. And basically that's it. The rest was Domlek being out of power, out of service in our low power supply areas. We still continue to ask our customers to call in. Our work today has pretty much gone back to routine work with there and there calls from customers indicating that they stay without service and areas that we have some broken chunks. Outside of that, we are back to normal line of work. So pretty much if you were to put a percentage on it, what would you say in terms of our restoration of the service? Pretty much 99%, 95%? Like I said, all our node areas, all of our fiber node areas are back up. Okay. So that, that, that so indicates to us, yeah, entirely. 100%. There is a lot of hard work which goes into restoring any service disruption, whether it is due to a storm or otherwise. The committed and dedicated team works hard to restore your service in the quickest possible time. We don't often get an insight or an opportunity to get an insight into the work that your team does, but um, must be real taxing work, isn't it, Mr? Yes, in particular this time around, we have to 
with special thanks and praises to the construction crew headed by Augustus Julian and the fiber team, headed temporarily by Skeffington Del Sol, overlooked and oversight by um, our manager Fitzroy Anthony. But they put a lot of work on restoring the fiber because in the case of the east, they had to replace pretty much 1,600 feet. But it takes a, a really um, determined um, spirit for you guys, your team, you know. You've done this many times, you've gone out there many, many a year after a storm and restored service. It's always, it's brave work. You have to be on the, on the poles, you have to be all over the place, going through the bushes, the valleys. The, I'm happy that you recognize it. I'm happy that you recognize it. It's brave work. Our customers may not it is be aware of what it takes. So perhaps that's why I'm asking you this. So you it's, can, it's 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 challenging things? work. It's challenging work, especially in, in times of the, the, the society that we live in and the times that we live in. People want things instantly. You know, they they understand that we cannot be out there. They understand that um, there's a disaster and we, so safety comes first. But there's a wind of opportunity they allow us. And if you stretch that, then you get, become impatient. So let's say, especially when power is restored and they don't have their service, you know, some customers expect you to come back almost immediately that power returns, the, the other services should, should return. Be up as well, yes. That's not, the expectation. That's the expectation. Yes. And, and it's, some might argue it's fair, but. In reality, it's not that way. It's the weather system has since gained strength and has become a Category 4 hurricane downgraded from Category 5. It still packs winds of 155 miles per hour. Jamaica and Haiti have been bracing themselves for impact. Matthew is being described as one of the most powerful storms to hit the Caribbean. It is bad news for Haiti, still recovering from the catastrophic earthquake of 2010. Coming up, the cultural semi-finals and the Chinese theater. Those and more after the break. Welcome back. Dominicans have been challenged to have more respect and appreciation for their culture. That call from Minister for Culture, Honorable Justina Charles, when she addressed the opening of the cultural competitions over the weekend. We have one week to celebrate and to pay reverence to our national symbols. We need to do that. I need to say it because sometimes we look at, for example, the national anthem is being sung. Thank you. Most people, are those I saw in front of me, normally we give reference to that. But some people continue to walk and go about their daily business. The national flag, I see our flag, we have them dragging all over the place. When we carry our national flag, it should not be touching down and dragging down. We need to hold up our national flag with pride. That is what makes us who we are. Do we do our children understand? I know the schools are doing it. Do we remind them of what the flag means? Our national anthem, our dish, our, our, our flower, our national flower. They need to know those things and they need to be able to give it that level of reverence and respect. Dominica's 38th anniversary of independence is being celebrated under the theme Strengthening Our Commitment to Nation Building. And the Honorable Minister urged Dominicans to abide by this theme in order to move the country forward. For those who might think that they can continue to destroy and denigrate the country, tomorrow we have to rebuild it. We need to think seriously of those things. And we don't fight with each other, but when they do those things that are negative, we need to remind them. We need to tell them you are hurting the country. And when you hurt the country, you hurt me. When we say negative things on Facebook, on the radio station, on all of the social media, and we say the negative things, it impacts all of us. We give the impression that Dominica is one of the worst countries. Let us begin to cherish it as Dominicans. As patriotic citizens, Dominica belongs to all of us. The Western Cultural Semi-Finals took place in Dubla on Saturday, while the Southern District Cultural Semi-Finals took place in Grand Bay on Sunday. The competitions continue this coming weekend with the Southwestern Semi-Finals cutted for the Goodwill Primary School on Saturday and the Northern Semi-Finals taking place at the Cabrits in Portsmouth on Sunday. 
The Dominica Cancer Society is hoping that the largest turnout to date for their main fundraiser will help it reach its target of $100,000. The annual Walk for Cancer Care took place on Saturday with teams walking from Massac and Point Michel and ending up on the Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard. Over 700 people participated in the walk and the coordinator of the event says this number will bring the society closer to realizing its goals. This year we saw um, a different level of, of, of cooperation, collaboration we saw the business places and the various organizations come out as groups to participate. So much so that some of them had their own banners. So the participation was very, very good. We took the walk on the two, um, two objectives. One is awareness. The second objective is a fundraiser, fundraising for cancer care. Roya is appealing to Dominicans to financially support their cause and help those who are afflicted with cancer. This year, we, with the kind of awareness that we had out there, I am hoping that those persons who worked with us and who have not contributed can still make a financial contribution to the Cancer Society. The teams, team leaders are out there with the sponsor sheets. Some people did not give. Some people say they give already just to get them out of their face. But if you truly were interested in working for cancer care, please make a contribution. The money which has not yet been all collected and counted has already been allocated to help three cancer patients. I always say if government of Dominica wasn't helping us to pay the cost of, of treatment, we would not have been able to, to manage that. But four people have gone. And we are still hoping to be able to meet the payment, the complete payment for the others. There are three others planning to go. We are I am in the process of preparing three others right now mm -hmm. to leave about the middle of October. So the need for the money is already, I say the money already finished, you know, we don't get it yet, but it finished. I am hoping we can come close enough to $100,000. At the culmination of the walk, a check of U.S. $3,000 was donated to the Dominica Cancer Society by a New York-based group, Cordia. An official media launching on Monday for this year's Financial Information Month. Agency manager of Surgical Life Inc., Brenton Hillier, highlighted some of the activities planned for the month. We will have discussions on TV with the National Youth Council. We'll have discussions on TV covering wheels. We'll also have a business symposium which speaks about improving business in the OECS. There will be the ECCU teachers workshop. We will also be working with schools and we plan to go to the Kalin Kalinago territory to work with them. There will be several, and when I say several, I mean several radio programs practically every week. We'll also have the airing of financial tips and workshops. So it's a very comprehensive program and we're asking you, show some interest work towards becoming a better financial expert and inquire on this program so that you can follow these activities every step of the way. Hillier explained that finance was more than just a bank or credit union and having money but being able to master one's finances. CEO of the NCCU, Elmer Irish, was among the main speakers at Monday's lunch. He encouraged those present to educate themselves on financial issues. The month of October holds much significance to the credit unions and as such we welcome these activities during this month. Credit unions worldwide from 1948 celebrates International Credit Union Day on the third Thursday of every October each year, this year on October 20th. The day is recognized to reflect upon the credit union's history and to promote, to promote its achievements. Two fundamental principles of the cooperative movement is education, training, and information, as well as concern for community. 
Each year, a country within the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union is chosen to produce a music video for Financial Information Month. Dominica kicked off the very first year with a video by Daddy Chess. Anguilla was chosen this year. And the cultural bond of a 12-year diplomatic relationship grew deeper over the weekend. The Commonwealth of Dominica established diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China on 23rd March 2004 and since then has been engaged in a significantly beneficial relationship. The Chinese ambassador said October is a special month for both countries as each is celebrating the peak of its cultural season. Because this is time of year in our two countries' calendar for celebrations. The celebrations of the founding of the People's Republic of China 67 years ago, yesterday, and the 38th anniversary of the independence of Dominica, which just started a week ago. Let's enjoy the performances and together celebrate the Chinese National Day and Dominica's Independence Day this evening. The ambassador was speaking at the gala performance of the China National Opera and Dance Drama Theatre over the weekend. Cultural cooperation programs and performances such as this will create greater understanding, tolerance, respect, solidarity and friendship among people of different cultures and ultimately lead to peace among the nations and the world. Indeed, these are the core values which underpin the relationship between Dominica and the People's Republic of China. 12 years of mutual love, understanding, and respect. This is why we will continue to uphold this relationship and give our fullest support to the One China policy. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. In cricket, India defeated New Zealand by 178 runs to close off their second test match on Monday. India took first to knock and made 316 all out with C. Pujara making 87 and A. Rahane 77. In reply, New Zealand were bowled out for 204 with none of their batsmen topping Jeetan Petal's 47. In the second innings, India posted 263, Rohit Shamar made 82 and W. Saha 58 not out. Set 376 for the win, New Zealand scored 197, Tom Leatham contributed 74. In football, there were three wins and one draw from matches played in the 2016 Flo Premier League on the weekend. Middleham United, Central Cooperative Credit Union, Dublin Football Club and Petro Caribe Point Michel had wins while Bath Estate and the Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers played to a 2 all draw. On Friday, Middleham United defeated Wacky Rollers 2-1 at the Dublin playing field. Ashton Robin and Kimon John Baptist scored for Middleham United. Jolan Sebastian scored for Wacky Rollers. Kimon John Baptist was named the man of the match. On Saturday, defending champions, Central Cooperative Credit Union Dubla Football Club edged out Sajiko Southeast for three at the Benjamin Park. Travis Joseph registered a hat trick for Dubla with Rufusel PL with scoring one. Josle Prince, Scotty Phillip, and Malian Phillip scored for Southeast. Travis Joseph was named the man of the match. On Sunday, Bud Kazimi registered the first beaver trick for the season as Petro Caribe Point Michel Football Club crushed RIC Kensbro 8-1 in the first match of a doubleheader at the Windsor Park Stadium. Delbert Graham and Dante Kazimi scored two each to complete the onslaught for Point Michel. Craig Reed scored the lone goal for Kensbro, but Kazimi was named the man of the match. In the second match, Buffet State Football Club and Northern Concrete and Steel Block Bombers played two or two all draw. After a goalless first half, Jamie Parillo opened the scoring for Bombers, with Denzel Lawrence getting the equaliser for Buffet State. Minutes later, Denzel Lawrence was again in the spotlight, giving Buffet State a 2-1 lead. Yanel Joseph got the equaliser for Bombers as they remained undefeated in their last four matches. Derrickson McDonald was named man of the match. The league continues on Tuesday between league leaders Caribbean Cool Harlem United and Exodus FC. On Wednesday, it will be Bath Estate FC against Sajiko Southeast. 
Both games are carded for Benjamin's Park at 6 p.m. Meantime, the Windies will be looking to avoid a whitewash when they face Pakistan for their third one-day international on Wednesday. In their most recent encounter, West Indies went down to the Pakistan side by 59 runs. The winners, taking first to knock, scored 337 for five. Babar Azam made 123, while S. Malik came in with 90 and S. Ahmed, 60. The Windies, in reply, could only reach 278 for seven. Dwayne Bravo struck 61, Marlon Samuels, 57, and Craig Brathwaite, 30. Pakistan leads the three-match series 2-0. Meanwhile, West Indies captain Jason Holder says, irrespective of their loss against Pakistan, he can take some positive lessons from the experience. I think this game, the batsmen showed a lot more promise, a lot more fight. You know, but we weren't able to get over the line. Um, if I go back to our innings when we bowled, I just felt we just leaked too many boundaries at the crucial stage in innings. I thought sure man had played an outstanding innings, and he changed the impetus in, in terms of the middle overs. I think he put us under some pressure in the middle overs, which we probably didn't react to as well as we would like. Uh, but having said that, there's still quite a, quite a few positives that we can look at. Alzheimer Jordan making his debut today, I thought he was pretty outstanding. Um, Craig Barthi, you know, coming into his second game, he showed a lot more promise, showed a lot more fight. Darren Babu getting the score as well, and Marlon Sam is continuing his good form. So, still a few positives to look at. Um, just think we just need to just bring together that one complete game. Moving on to rounders, we can tell you that Margot Cooperative Credit Union Stars beat St. Joe Phoenix by four wickets in one of the semi final matches played in the Giant Malt National Rounders League on Sunday. St. Joe batted first and scored 286 all out. Carol Ravalier, 62. Marilyn Tusa, 58, and Roslyn Telemach, 35. In reply, MCCU stars made 287 for 7 in 37.2 overs. Paulina Marie, 64, Vernel Francois, 56, and Mislin Alexander, 54. In another match, Rising Stars defeated Posse Rock Stars by 7 wickets. Rock Stars opened the batting with 198 all out. Carla Dinad and Agatha Azil made 32. Patsy Andre and Jennifer Moulin, 30. Set 198 to win, Rising Stars scored 206 for 4 in 27.4 overs. Frederica Carbon, 70, Ophelia Henry, 39, and Nadia Damier, 31. Next up, we have the most recent results from the Soka Rum Dominate 300 Domino League. Game 1, Marboy 007, 77 dose, 3 points. Tico Pawezo, 77 dose, 2 points. And Execute, 59 dose, 1 point. In Game 2, Martian, 78 dose, 3 points. Maho, 71 dose, 2 points. And Demolish, 62 dose, 1 point. Game 3 had Smart and Lilia punishers on 3 points each since Arms defaulted. Meantime, in another match, 4B Scum, 75 dose, 3 points. Dolphins, 73 dose, 2 points and demolished 72 doors on one point. Baghdad had 71 doors three points in another game with Marboy 007 on 69 doors two points and the Green City 66 doors one point. Finally Riders 95 doors three points, Tico Powers on 65 doors two points and Galba Boys 63 doors one point. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. We'll see you in the next one. And now, your weather forecast. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carette Joseph. We start off this evening by taking a look at earlier satellite imagery. And what it shows is deep convection associated with Hurricane Matthew, another category for hurricane, currently moving towards the north, towards Haiti and Jamaica. Visible satellite imagery shows multi-layered clouds over Dominica throughout the course of the day. Radar imagery indicated minimal shower activity over the Lesser Antilles today. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with some scattered showers. Similar weather conditions for tomorrow with the possibility for some afternoon thunderstorm activity. Sea conditions are moderate in open water with waves up to 5 feet. Taking a look at the extended forecast, again tomorrow Tuesday, Weak and stable conditions will result in partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy skies with some scattered showers and some possible afternoon thunderstorms. A tropical wave expected to move across the area on Wednesday into Thursday, resulting in partly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered showers and some possible thunderstorm activity on Wednesday and Thursday. Mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and some possible thunderstorm activity. 
And across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected. On the international scene, overcast skies in New York, some thunderstorm activity in Miami and Caracas, and clear skies in London and in Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.55 a.m. and set at 5.52 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Oral submissions wrapped up on Monday in what could evolve into a legal challenge of government procurement practices. The General Post Office closed for maintenance and head of the National Youth Council targets the enablers of underage drinking. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis. And to all our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.